Welcome to the next video in the search for a better health topic. This video will be looking at syllabus.9.4.12, outline how the function of genes, mitosis, cell differentiation and specialization assist in the maintenance of health. So if you feel terrible because you get a bad night's sleep or you've had a fight with a friend, does that mean that you have poor health? So basically the answer is no. Despite you not feeling great, your body continues to function regularly and you can maintain optimal health due to the internal biological processes that occur in your body. So if you refer back to the, the previous video, the last syllabus dot point, we know that health is the absence, or sorry, the total physical, mental and social well-being of an individual and that disease is the impairment of the functioning of an organism or a part of an organism. So even though you're not feeling great, your mental and your social well-being may not be totally in check, but it's not really having an impairment or causing an impairment to an organ in your body. So the things that do impact on your health, however, include the functioning of your genes, the process of mitosis, and the two processes of cell differentiation and specialization. So we're going to start off by having a look at genes. So genes are the units of inheritance that uh, basically tell our body what to do. So what color hair we have, what color eye we have, whether we're more predisposed to be obese, whether we write with our right hand or left hand. So genes are a section of DNA that are found on your chromosomes. So in all of our cells, in the nucleus, we have 46 chromosomes that are made up of DNA. And then this DNA is broken into, as we can see at the top here, sections called genes. So you receive half your genes from your mother and half your genes from your father, which is why sometimes you get different characteristics from one of your parents, or sometimes you get a combination of the two. Genes assist in the maintenance of health by regulating the cell cycle, such as mitosis, which we'll look at in a second, and limiting the growth and reproduction of cells. So basically, genes control the process of protein synthesis. So protein synthesis we'll be looking at in a lot of detail in the blueprint of life topic. So at the moment, we just need to know that the DNA sequence in genes provides the code for proteins that are needed for growth and repair. So basically, what happens is the genes are read and turned into RNA. And then that RNA travels to the ribosomes in our cytoplasm where a protein is built. So enzymes, which help to control all our body processes, which we'll be looking at in the maintaining a balance topic, are proteins and thus have been produced from the codes of genes. So in order to maintain healthy functioning cells, the appropriate genes must be expressed. What we mean by that is they need to be either switched on or switched off, depending on the type of cell that we have and the, that cell's particular job. So even with no damage to the cell, the genes need to be expressed efficiently to produce all the compounds necessary for healthy existence. Some are activated by changes in the environment of the cell in order to maintain the health of an organism. So if we come across something that doesn't quite uh, sit with us, doesn't quite, um, or the changes the environment of the cell, then different genes can be activated in order to try to overcome those changes. So secondly, we have mitosis. So we looked at mitosis in the preliminary course. So we know that mitosis is a, a cell division that produces identical daughter cells. So there's no um, dividing of the genes and the chromosomes like in meiosis. So we start with 46 chromosomes in human cells and we end up with 46 chromosomes. And we know that mitosis is important for growth and reproduction. Okay, so we need mitosis to occur to create new cells in order for an organism to grow. Also, the process of asexual reproduction. So each day, millions of cells die and are replaced by mitosis. A lot of those are on our skin. Our blood cells die regularly. And as so do other cells in our immune system that we need to be able to fight diseases. So if cells are damaged through injury or disease, they are replaced by the division of healthy cells that are close to the injury or disease site. So as we move through this topic, we'll be having a look at how different cells divide and replace damaged cells. So for example, if the epithelial cells in your skin are damaged, other epithelial cells will divide 
and basically replace them, forming first a scab and then underneath the scab, the new skin cells will seal up the wound and then we'll be all good to go again. So if mitosis is not controlled by the correct genes, however, cell division will occur continuously and basically what we'll have is a tumour. So some tumours can be cancerous, but not all tumours are cancerous. A tumour is basically just an amalgamation of uncontrolled cells that have just continued to grow without those genes switching on to tell the cell to stop dividing. And lastly, we have cell differentiation. So this is a process that cells undergo when they are formed after mitosis. So mitosis creates the new cells and then uh, cell differentiation takes place after that. So each cell has the genetic information necessary to produce every single type of cell that we need. However, each cell normally differentiates to become a specialized cell with a specialized structure and function. During cell differentiation, the genes necessary for that cell are switched on while the other genes are switched off. So for our skin cells, the, the genes that tell those particular cells to be skin are switched on and the genes to tell it to be bone, blood, hair cells, etc., are all switched off. So many types of cells have specialized roles in maintaining the health of an organism. So for example, we have specialized blood cells that produce antibodies to a sorry, to attack a disease causing microorganism. And we'll be having a look at these special blood cells when we move into the immune response later on in this topic. So how do the three of these things work together? Genes, mitosis and cell differentiation play an essential role in the development of an organism from a single cell during fertilization to an adult. So while major growth and differentiation only occur once in the life of an organism, so mostly this occurs straight after the sperm and the egg come together, the growth of new cells the and the replacement of cells occurs regularly. So once the genes that control mitosis go out of control, as we said, cell division continues to occur, forming tumors. And if these tumors spread to other parts of the body, we can or we result in the disease called cancer. So now we've had a look at those things individually and we've had a look at how they all work together. We've now come to the end of this video. So thank you for watching.